So now looky here. There's no one that hates cleaning guns more than I do. But if you got the luxury of doing it at your bench, all right, then we're gonna get to that. First off, I got my JP shop apron on. We sell these, by the way. And then, of course, I'm gonna prepare for surgery here because I don't like to get all mucked up. Now, this is my rimfire rifle for steel challenge. It's a uh, SCI 20 with a uh, ultralight barrel. I've got a lot of rounds through this. So, uh, obviously, if I'm gonna go to an event tomorrow or even a league tonight, I'm gonna go through this process to make sure this thing is not gonna fail. Let's take up my beautiful, uh, let's go Brandon flag there and pop this apart. Now, you know, there's a lot of solvents you could use to do this. I kind of prefer an oil-based paint thinner. A couple of reasons. It's very low volatility, and it's, this flammability is very low, so I'm not going to blow myself up here, and I'm not going to be exposed to so much fumes like if I use lacquer thinner. Now, it's not a degreaser, but it doesn't matter because we're not going to degrease this thing because when we're done with it, we're going to re-oil it anyway. So I'm just going to put a little bit of this in my, my little wash pan here. It doesn't take much. And then I got my, uh, my tools here, and I want a, uh, I want a toothbrush cleaning. Uh, of course, these are much, much better than a toothbrush that you might use in your mouth. And also, uh, because they're stiffer, you really should have a stainless brush. I, I'm actually out of that. I'm out of stainless brushes right now, but this will do the job for me. So I got my bolt assembly here. And I'm not going to do a detail strip, because what I want to do here is really my quick clean uh, in a more thorough sense before I go to an event. So I've got my solvent, and first off, I'm gonna brush off the breech face of the bolt. You know, as we discussed earlier, the causes of ignition failure are all right here. And I got my scraper, and I'm just gonna do a line around the cutout for the cartridge here so that I know there's no debris to prevent it from fully going into battery. And then of course, I'm gonna do the same thing on the breech face here, and I can see that actually I've got quite a bit of fouling that has been built up on that breech face. We'll show you, show you a close up of that actually. All right, I'm gonna get all that debris off the breech face because that is an ignition failure waiting to happen. I've got my compressed air here. I'll blow that out. I'm going to lock this in the vise, and I'm going to clean my chamber because that fouling in the chamber is another problem with rim fires. So I've got my 22 bore brush, got on my variable speed drill here, a section of rod which reaches the chamber, and as I come in there, I'm just going to go in and out of that chamber area just like that, and if there is some hardened buildup fouling in there, that's going to take it all out. Now, finally, I'm going to blow that through. And I don't even have to run a bore brush through here, through the barrel. That's, that's all I needed to do. Remember, I'm lazy and I want to do as little as possible here to keep this running. You can remove your optic, probably a good idea. I, I use a, the solvent very sparingly, so I'm typically not getting anything on the optic. But uh, if you want to, if you've got a quick detach, which this one is, it's pretty easy to take that off and avoid falling up the lens on it. Now finally, I'm gonna check my trigger. And if you got one of our triggers on, I'm gonna, with the hammer held down, I'm gonna push the trigger back and forth just to make sure that my reset is good and there's not debris underneath the set screws of the trigger. And I'm gonna blow that out with the hammer down where the trigger articulates back and forth. I'm gonna blow that out of the lower. And if there's any debris underneath those adjustment screws, that'll get rid of it and make sure I don't have a failure to reset. If I, I would also take some of our trigger grease and put it on the sear at this point just to make sure that my, my sear prep is good. Finally, I'm gonna take this. You can get these uh, online. They're a upper receiver brush. And that's just a good job of taking the extra debris out of the receiver. I'm gonna give that a little bit more air. Last thing we're doing before we put the bolt assembly back in is to lubricate it. And you want to use a lube that is very low viscosity, almost like water. You don't want a lubricant 
that is going to add any resistance or friction to the system. All right. And there we go. Now we're going to reassemble. I'm going to try my trigger one more time. Resets. Good. Reflag it. And guess what? I'm ready to go. Now, how long did that take? A few minutes at most. So it's a very quick procedure to make sure that the weapon is completely ready to go for an event. You're probably going to make it through an eight-stage steel challenge with no issues at all. Now, what if you don't have the luxury of being at home and in the bench and you're at an event and you start having malfunctions? Let's talk about that. Hey, so here we are at the match. Maybe I've had a couple of hiccups and now I'm gonna do the quick and dirty clean to make sure that this thing comes back into the envelope. And it's gonna be very quick, very simple. I got my emergency toolkit here. I got my trusty dental pick in case I got a cavity. I got my bore brush and I've got my low viscosity oil. Now, I'm not gonna use this, but I'd probably throw this in the car with me. If I, especially if I was going to a big event, I'd throw my variable speed drill because that allows me to clean the chamber, but I'm not even gonna use that here. So I'm gonna pull the upper off the lower. We're in the safety area, of course. Guns, but no ammo. Got my toothbrush. First thing we're gonna do is brush the fouling off the bolt face. And I can see that I've got a significant amount there. And just think about it now that all it takes really is one shaving of lead to be stuck on this bolt face or somewhere between the bolt face and the breech face. No different than shimming that bolt out of battery. And you don't have to shim it out of battery too much before you start having ignition failures where you waste your KE of the hammer striking the firing pin uh, and the cartridge is not fully seated with the rim against the, the, the bolt face and the breech face. So the, the firing pin and the cannot pinch it because you've got play there. So that's, that's really the problem with ignition failures. Same thing with the breech face on the barrel. I'm gonna get in there, take off as much of that stuff as I can. And that's why I bring my dental pick because you know the brush goes so far and then you've got to get in there. Last few little bits I'm gonna take off with the dental pick. I'm gonna go back to my bolt and I'm also going to uh, just scrape around right where the cartridge seats. You see there's some debris underneath the extractor. You can get that out of there. Now I'm going to take my 22 caliber bore brush. I'm not going to clean the bore. And uh, let me say that people over clean these things. There's really no need to clean the bore on a rimfire rifle very often, but the chamber for sure. So I'm going to get into the chamber here and I give that a few spins and that is going to uh, pull all of that fouling that builds up in the chamber of our M fire rifle because that fouling of course causes the problem of the cartridge failing to seat fully or failing to extract reliably and all and really about 99 percent of all your malfunction scenarios are really due to these few things I'm, I'm pointing out right here finally i'm going to lube this thing up on the bearing surfaces of the bolt my recoil guide rod One final thing I'm going to do here also is uh, put a few drops on my, this is a side charger, and I'm going to uh, put a few drops on my side charging rail there. And that is about it. Feels much better. So you can see that's all it is. Very simple to bring your rifle back into that envelope of function. Now let's head out to the next stage. So within about a minute or so, you can get the rifle back into service and about 95% of your malfunctions are involved in just those simple issues right there. Here's a uh, CWA pistol, very cool little pistol. Chet Whistle is the guy behind these. 
and I just got one of these about a year ago, and I'm really, really liking it. Uh, his build quality and uh, metal finishing and everything is just really superb. So these are kind of the state-of-the-art steel challenge pistol nowadays. Same thing here. If I uh, And I, I've had no problem with feeding and stripping and ejection and all that. I've had a few ignition failures, but that is like the preventable problem. And without even stripping the pistol down, I can go in here and clean off the breech face and the slide face. And that's about all you have to do. And all of a sudden, you're good for another couple hundred rounds with no issues at all. So very fast and dirty. These are the tools I'm bringing with me to the range. Uh, bring uh, also a, uh, a squib rod and a hammer. Uh, not very often you need that. I, I wouldn't even bother to put that in my range bag, but I definitely have it in my car. So those are the tools I'm bringing. And of course your oil and your immediate like emergency tools. I'd have those in my shooting bag. They take up hardly any room. And there you go. And your gun is back up and running. So. With those few simple tricks, uh, you're going to be able to keep your firearms running to the extent of the reliability of the ammunition. There again, there is no such thing as a rimfire system that is 100%. Well, no system, center fire rimfire is 100%, but rimfire, or rimfire is significantly less reliable due to the issues with the ammunition as opposed to center fire. I hope you got something out of this. This is John Paul at JP Enterprises, and I'm hoping to see you at the range. Also, check out our video on the maintenance of the Ruger 1022 rotary magazine. I get one of our sponsored shooters, Peter Parfenick, and he has a maintenance protocol on those that will keep those magazines running, because as you know, if you own one of those, and I got four of them, that is one of the Achilles heels of that platform. So check that video out.